across uh, the country, across Africa, and across the world. So much to talk about. Today, I will be focusing on Nigeria's engagement with the African Development uh, Bank. Uh, the country uh, director of the African Development Bank, that's the senior director of the Nigeria country office of the African Development Bank, will be joining me, Ebrima uh, Fal, who oversees a portfolio of about... Uh, you know, $6 billion in Nigeria. Don't forget that Nigeria is the largest shareholder of the African Development Bank. And Dr. Akimumi Adeshina, who is the president of the African Development Bank, was in Nigeria uh, last uh, week. Uh, the vice president, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, commissioned the country office of the African Development Bank here in Abuja, the central business district. I'll be speaking with uh, Mr. Fowl on a lot of issues as it concerns Nigeria. African Development Bank also released it, uh, its African Economic Outlook uh, for that Africa, for Africa, that was last Wednesday. Quite a whole lot of what uh, talked about in the report. I'll be giving you a breakdown shortly. So uh, do join us on all our social media platforms and send your comments, your questions, and your opinions. All right, let's uh, get started. The governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin uh, Emefele, has allayed the fears of Nigerians and the international community over the inability of the bank to hold a monetary policy committee meeting earlier scheduled for Monday and Tuesday due to the non-confirmation of the MPC nom uh, nominees. That's the monetary policy committee nominees by the Senate. The Apex Bank governor explained that the MPC meeting would not be holding in January 2018 as a result of the bank's inability to form a quorum as stipulated in the CBN Act 2007. In spite of the statutory meeting not holding in January, MFLA noted that the key economic indicators continue to move in the right direction and the Central Bank of Nigeria would continue to maintain the key variables as decided in the last MPC meeting of November 2017. And if I take you through the key variables, we, we know the MPR uh, at 14%, that the monetary policy uh, rate at 14%, 22.5% for the cash reserve ratio and the liquidity ratio at 30%. MFLA has allayed fears that there's no problem because even in the CBN Act, there's a clause there that if something like this happens, you know, it's not a crisis situation. But at this point, like I advised the government last week, that what the government needs to do is perhaps when you are appointing people, nominating to appoint, nominate, then approve by the National Assembly, try and stagger it so that we don't find ourselves in this situation again. All right, let's take a look at the economic outlook of the African Development Bank as released last Wednesday. Uh, we do know that um, African economies have been resilient. The African Development Bank says that the African economies have been resilient and gaining uh, momentum. The real output growth was put at 3.6% in 2017, up from 2.2% in 2016. What else did the African Development Bank say? Growth forecast put at 4.1% in 2018 and 2019, and recovery of growth on the African continent is faster than envisaged. Uh, than we've seen so far. Uh, economic diversification is key to solving the continent's problem. Africa's infrastructure requirements run up to 130 billion to 170 billion, uh, billion dollars a year. So for Africa, each country as it were, would need to step up in terms of funding for infrastructure. I do know that in Nigeria, for us to get funding right, we need excess of trillions of Naira to get our infrastructure right. So Africa needs about $130 billion to $170 billion every year for the next 30 years uh, to get infrastructure right. Industrialized to end poverty and generate employment for about 10 to 12 million young people every year. The EFDB is to organize African Investment Forum on November 7th to 8th, 2018, in Johannesburg, South Africa, and agriculture must be at the forefront of Africa's uh, industrialization. 
Now, if we take a look at the sub-regional growth in Africa, East Africa remains the fastest growing region in uh, Africa with a 5.6% growth in 2017, up from 4.9% in 2016, to hit 5.9% in 2018, and 6.1% in 2019. The countries in East Africa that are spearheading this growth are Ethiopia, Rwanda, uh, Kenya. Uh, so growth is expected to be buoyant in this region of Africa. I'm talking about East Africa. North Africa is the second fastest growing region uh, in Africa. It recorded a growth rate of 5% in 2017, up from 3.3% in 2016. Southern Africa is estimated to reach 1.6% in 2017, up from 0.9%. Uh, in, in the Southern African region, improvement are in three main commodity exporters, South Africa, Angola, uh, oil, as well as uh, Zambia. Now, West Africa, in terms of the region, comes fourth. That's the last. Uh, not the last because we have the Central African uh, region. But for West Africa, the growth was supported by increased oil production and output growth in agriculture. West Africa is projected to accelerate to 3.6% in 2018 and 3.8% in 2019. Now, for Central Africa, uh, the growth is uh, expected uh, to reach 2.6% uh, in 2018 and 3.8% in 2019. All right, that's it for the regions, according to the African Development Bank. I'm talking about growth. Now, let's take a look at country size by GDP. Nigeria is the, uh, you know, the largest economy on the African continent. Uh, it's, uh, has, it has a GDP of uh, $581 billion. South Africa is second with a GDP of $276 billion. And of course, South Africa is the most advanced economy on the African continent. Nigeria is in terms of largest, in terms of size, but South Africa is the most industrialized on the African continent. So it's not just about big. You can be big and there's nothing inside of you. That's actually what it is for Nigeria right now. Egypt is the third with a GDP of $264 billion. Algeria has a total of $170 billion. At to in, uh, that's GDP. Su Sudanese economy is uh, fifth with a GDP of $124 billion. Moroccan economy uh, is driven by a growth of at least 4%, is sixth with a GDP of $121 billion. Angola has $104 billion at GDP size, and it's uh, the second to Nigeria in terms of oil production. Ethiopia, which is the engine of African growth, comes eighth with a place of $93 billion. Kenya, $77 billion, Tanzania with a total of $52 billion and completes the top 10 uh, countries on the African continent in terms of uh, GDP size. All right, that's it. Some kind of analysis for you uh, this morning. All right, let's uh, continue with the program. In order for Nigeria to attain a 7% renewable energy use by the